So if you run on any type of RTB network, the majority of the time they'll be considered what's called a blind network. And what this means is, is that when you're advertising with them, they will never pass the actual app name or website that you're actually referring, you're actually getting traffic from. What they'll do is pass what's called a unique ID and each ad network uses a different type of ID. So for example, um, one of the one of the sites or one of the ad networks that I'll be showing you how to do this with is called Pop Ads, and they use what's called a site ID. Now, traditionally, when you run on these networks, you have to just go and open up everything or go after certain categories and stuff like that, and then actually see which sites are working, which ones are, are failing, but you'll only know the ID. So then what you do is you take those IDs and you make what's called a whitelist, which only allows the profitable IDs, or you do the blacklist method, which basically you take out any site that isn't converting for you, and then over time you should find a winner. What I'm about to show you, however, is how to find sites that generally have higher quality traffic. So for example, a lot of sites that are going to be lower quality, they're getting their, they're getting their actual site traffic from other shadier methods. And obviously, you know, bot traffic and stuff like that isn't going to convert. So this method allows us to look up websites that are actually receiving search traffic. And then we can grab not only the site, but we can also grab their site ID and know which ones are actually using pop ads as an ad network. And then we can actually take those site IDs, go to pop ads and actually just run directly on those sites without ever having to actually run on what's called run of the network run and do the black whistle light whitelist method that way by doing this heavier research up front we're actually saving a ton of money because we're actually learning which sites potentially should work better and at least get rid of a lot of the crappier sites so the first thing we're going to want to do is we open up scrape the tool called scrapebox here and what scrapebox allows us to do is it allows us to literally do exactly what it sounds like it does scrape all sorts of data now recently scrapebox updated to scrapebox 2.0 and with it they allow us now to make what's called custom data grabbers so the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is we'll go ahead and do some keyword scraping so pretend that we were advertising um, let's say uh, mp3s or movies or you know something like that say that we're just advertising uh, music so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll type in in brackets music in brackets mp3 um, other ideas you could do is actual song names album names artist names stuff like that and then you go ahead and come down here and we're gonna click start well first real quick uh, basically we can we can adjust which uh, Google it uses. So for example, if we were trying to find certain sites in India or Brazil, UK, Japan, stuff like that, we would actually choose the actual Google that correlates with them. So for example, Russia would be .ru. But we'll go ahead and just stick with .com for now. And what it'll be doing is it'll take these initial keywords for us and then it'll use Google Keyword Suggest, it'll use Google uh, YouTube suggestions, all these different processes of finding us other keywords that sites may be ranking for and give us a nice list of keywords. So we'll go ahead and click start. And this will generally take anywhere between a minute to five minutes, depending on how many keywords you have. It could get pretty out of hand. So as you see, it's a small list, so it gave us some kind of relevant keywords. You know, you, a lot of times you want to go through this and and actually see if any of them are actually useful to you. So for now, what we'll do is we'll just stick with the original keywords that we had, or, or we'll just go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and we click uh, transfer results to the left, and if we wanted, we could go ahead and click start again, and then it would use all these keywords to find some more keywords to each of those, so you can basically grow a keyword list pretty quickly. So what we'll do is go ahead and export all of those keywords that it found over to Scrapebox, so as you can see, it took all of these keywords and it moved it over to our, our keyword harvester. So we'll go ahead and click close here. And now when we click start harvest right here, we have 
all these different search engines that we can use to actually find relevant websites. So for example, I like to use Google pretty much exclusively. So we click Google and click start. Now what it's doing is it's actually searching each of those keywords one by one and taking a list of all the results, all the websites that it found. So we will, at the end of this, we'll have a list of sites that rank for all these different keywords in Google. So now what we have is it shows how many keywords it got for, or sorry, how many sites it got from each keyword. So as you can see, some of them didn't even have a thousand results or perhaps our, po our proxies got blocked from Google. So what we'll do is we then go ahead and just click go back. And then we go ahead and click close. So what will happen is it will bring all of those websites that it found for those keywords over to our, our harvested URLs. So the first thing I generally like to do is I go over here to under manage lists and I click trim, trim to root. So it will get rid of all the uh, actual inner URLs and just go to the root and then remove and filter. So now we remove duplicates. So it will clean our list so we're not looking up the same sites over and over. So we went from 200,000 results down to 34,000, which is still pretty good. The only thing now is, is we don't know if they have actual advertising on them and if they have particularly what we're looking for is pop ads. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go to grab and check. And for now, I'll just show you what this does first, and then I'll show you actually how to go in and do it. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go down to pop ads here and under custom data grabber and it'll take all of our URLs that we harvested from the original keywords and I go ahead and click save URLs with extracted data that way we know which websites um, it actually finds and we go ahead and click start here now what it's doing is it's actually opening up each of those websites it's viewing the source code and then it's scanning for the pop ads code uh, based on a macro that I set up which I'll show you here in a bit so as you can see, it's going through all 34,000 websites. And so far, out of those 34,000 websites, it's already found seven that use pop ads, now eight. So it goes relatively quickly, but I'll go ahead and let this finish up and then turn the video back on. So now the actual scraper completed. And as you can see here, it had found out of the 34,000 original websites that we had, it found 88 of them that used pop ads. So the cool thing is, is even this alone wouldn't tell us much. Okay, we know that we have 88, wonderful. But we also, like I mentioned, grabbed the site ID. So should be this one right here. Okay, so from the original 34, thousand websites here is 88 websites that actually use pop ads so this right here is the domain name and then this right here is the site ID name or sorry the site ID that pop ads uses so if we wanted to actually advertise on pop ads right now and advertise on hitsongsdownloadfree.com the site ID that we need to target is 547350 now traditionally like I mentioned to get this type of data is pretty much impossible like actually knowing the website, you'd have to hope that the referral leaked through while tracking your campaigns, and that pop ads generally doesn't do that. So, you know, never before have we really known which websites pop ads is actually sending us traffic from. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back and actually show you the uh, the macro that I had set up. So, what we'll do is under custom data grabber right here you click create and edit and so what we'll do is we will first make a new a brand new pop ads um, scraper basically so what I do is I'll name it pop ads 2 because I already have one I just put pop ads again here pop ads started column so you put number of pop ads and when it finishes, it'll automatically put how many pop ads it found. Or sorry, right here. So pop ads finished. With my horrible spelling. So then what you want to do is also make it so it always saves the URLs with data. 
Now this connections right here, uh, because this is threaded, a threaded application, we can actually have it do multiple requests at once. And so if your computer is generally slower or your internet is slower, I would definitely recommend leaving it at 30. However, if your computer is fast and your internet is pretty good, you can go all the way up to 500 and it will do 500 websites at a time. So obviously it will be quicker, but it will also lag the crap out of your computer. So just be aware of that. So we'll just go ahead and leave it at 50 for now. And then we will click as save new module. And as you can see, it now put pop ads two over here. Now this is not done because all we did was add an actual pop ads or a data grabber category. It does not know what data you're looking for or where to grab it. So what we have to do is go to edit module masks and it'll bring up something like this. So what we do is we just type in pop ads again example the expected data so what this is doing it I'm sorry so up here we'll put site ID actually so what it wants is an example of expected data and so because we are looking up site IDs and for pop ads specifically their numbers we'll just put a random number here and it's an example of what the data is looking for so now in this box if you know regex you can use regex to actually set this up and do some pretty awesome things however if you don't know regex um, I'm going to show you an easier way for at least what we're trying to do. So first thing you need to do is you need to type in before underscore after equals. Now you have to do this regardless and it shows it right here, um, the format. And basically what it's showing is the XXXX is the data before, this, in our case, the site ID, and then you will put a pipe and then we have to put the data after. So to do this, We'll go ahead and save this as a new mask for now. We'll close this out. And we have to go over to open this back up so we can open up our data folder. So what we'll do is we'll actually take this website. Now this is this is the problem is you actually need to know the ad codes that you're looking for ahead of time. So that is probably the most difficult part of this. So finding a website that you know has pop ads on it, for example. So what we do is we go ahead and go to this website because we know this has pop ads on it. And there was the pop ad. So we're going to close it. And what we're going to do as soon as my computer stops lagging is look in the source code. This is a VPN, by the way, so it's very slow. VPS, rather. Okay, so right here, we can see that this is the pop ads code. It even says popads.net, pop under code for the website. So the, the specific thing that we want, especially for pop ads, is we want this site ID. So what we want to do is we actually want our scraper to go through it and find this right here. And if it finds underscore pop.push, that generally means that it has pop ads on it. So what we'll do is we go ahead and take that data and we got to go back over here to our, our checker and edit it. So go to pop ads two, ed edit the module masks and go back to our site ID. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting the before what we're looking for. So it's underscore pop dot push site ID and then it would be bracket because the bracket is where the site ID is actually going to be in the code. And then after the bracket, we take this. And so we go ahead and put that in there like this. So basically what it's doing is it's looking for before and after. It's looking for pop.push site ID and this bracket is what it grabs for the site ID. So we go ahead and update it and that's it. So right after I finished doing the actual macro, my computer crashed. So I went ahead and set up a new keywords MP3 in the movie, and I went ahead and just scraped a few URLs real quick. So with the macro that we just set up, what we do is we go to grab and check right here. We go to custom data grabber. We click on pop ads too, because that's the one we had set up. Go ahead and click save URLs to extract data, and go ahead and click start. And out of our 521 sites, it should find at least one record, which it already did. So just to do this quickly, 
I'll go ahead and click stop here. Click show data folder. And our recent scrape is right here. So we can see that we got kn2blog.com with the site ID of 7259. So just to verify, we'll go ahead and go to that site in Chrome. Go to k2nblog.com. Then open view source. Do control F for pop ads. And as you can see, here's the pop ads code. So popads.net pop dot push site ID equals 72959. So our code is successful and it works. So now we can scrape any new keywords we want, get a huge list of URLs and go ahead and scrape them and find the site IDs. And the best part about this is, is because how the scraper works, it uses Google. And so we know that the majority of these sites that we're grabbing, basically all of them actually is that they all rank for at least something in Google and therefore they're probably not as shady because if you're ranking in Google, you know, your site's obviously got some good stuff to it. And therefore all these sites that it finds are generally higher quality than just running Ron. So it's pretty awesome. And now in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you basically how to take the list of sites after you find that they're, that they actually have pop ads on them and then show you what to do next to actually further the data that you have about the sites to find the demographics about them, to find actually where they're getting the traffic, you know, volume, the percentage of search, the percentage of uh, referral traffic, also how many social shares they have, all this stuff that'll help you basically set up your campaign with highly successful websites ahead of time before even running on the ad network at all. So pretty awesome stuff.